getting ready to present this next young man. He is our longest running alumni, 14 to 21. Please welcome the presenter, pastor, assistant to the general overseer, Denise Tobert. Amen. I'm here to present, but I'm here to do a double presentation because I was asked on behalf of Dr. Ruth Peterson to present to IPA a donation of $1,000 to our general overseer from Dr. Ruth Peterson. Here you go, sir. Amen. It is my honor and my privilege this afternoon to introduce to some and present to others our alumni, Cameron Dixon. Cameron is 20 years old and resides in Aden, North Carolina. Cameron is a member of the Anointed Ones Church of Deliverance International and receives great wisdom and teaching from his pastors, Apostle Ruth Peterson and Pastor Helen Vines. Cameron is enrolled at East Carolina University pursuing degrees in criminal justice and political science. Cameron is a server at his church, community through many organizations and on campus at ECU. Cameron strongly lives by Matthews 22 and 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Congregation receive Cameron Dixon. Amen. Give an honor to God for being here, to Archbishop Chitwood for the opportunity, and to my leaders, Apostle Ruth Peterson and Pastor Helen Williams. Someone once said that in order for us to accomplish great things, we must not only act, but we must also dream. We must not merely plan, but we must also believe. Yeah. Now, every morning when we wake up, we are presented with two choices. We can either press snooze and continue to sleep with our dreams, or we can wake up and begin to chase them. Like if you're like me, it can be very tempting to press snooze. The snooze button does not deny you the chance of awakening. It just delays the time at which we do. Amen. However, today, I would like to challenge you to stop delaying your time yes. and start creating it. Yeah. Let's look at the story of Joseph in Genesis 37. Most of us probably know the story. In Genesis 37 and 5, Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He then goes on in verses 6 through 8 to explain the dream he had and how their sheaves of grain bow down to his. And this caused his brothers to become even more angry. What's the fastest way to kill a dream? You tell it to a small-minded person. In the words of actor Denzel Washington, small minds discuss other people. Good minds discuss events, but only the truly great minds can discuss dreams. Come on, Cameron. That's what happened here with Joseph. Joseph told his dream to people that could not comprehend it. This brings me to my first point. Everyone cannot share the dream. Right. Everyone can't share the dream. And so when we read on a little further, we see just how upset his brothers were. Verse 18 says that even before he approached them, they were already plotting his death. Yeah. Verse 19 says, they say to each other, come now, let's kill him, throw him into one of these pits, and then let's see what becomes of that old dream. Joseph was a dreamer who told his dream to people that he thought were dream chasers, but turned out to be dream killers. How many times have we had a goal or a dream? that we told to a friend or family member, and they began to discourage you. And so what we find out from the text is that sometimes people will sink the whole ship just because they don't like us as the captain. It was in this moment alone, in the dark, and at the bottom of the pit that Joseph could have pressed snooze, but he didn't. And so in Genesis 30, Joseph goes from working, from being in the pit in Genesis 37 to working at the palace in Genesis 40. This brings me to my second point, stick with it. Yeah. Even when you reach that point when you're by yourself, stick with it. Stick with it. A seed grows with no sound, 
yet a tree falls with huge noise. This just means that destruction is loud while creation is quiet. Continue to dream quietly and stick with it. As we go through the story, we come through chapter 40, verse 41. Years have passed since he was in the pit, but he never strayed from the original dream. Yes. In verse 41, Pharaoh says to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of all the land of Egypt. In chapter 42, Joseph's brothers come back during the famine, and now they must bow down to greet him. Yes. That dream he had way back in Genesis 37 was delayed but not denied. Yes. The, my final point, dreams do still come true. Yes. yes. The path may not always be the easiest or straightforward. It may not come when you want it, but I promise you, it's always right on time. Yeah. It's in this place when no one is watching where God develops us for positions of prosperity. This prosperity does not always appear as material things. It may come as wisdom like Solomon, favor like Noah, or elevation like Joseph. It's important to understand the language of the gift because at times it may feel like the dream is being buried, but it's just being planted. I stop by today to let you know that it's now time to wake up. Yeah. Now is the time to cut the alarm off. Yeah. You can't press snooze on your dreams any longer. You have to wake up, run after your dreams, yeah. jump over the hard yes. parts, yes. and walk into your season of prosperity. I would like to leave you with this. Everyone can't share the dream, but even if you find yourself in a hard place, stick with it because dreams do still come true. God bless you. Come on, let's show Cameron Dixon.